If you really want to challenge a physicist, ask her to define what is energy. Energy, once again, is one of those terms where we use it in everyday life and it has a lot of meaning to us, but in, the, in terms of a physics term, it has a very special definition. But it's very difficult to articulate what it is other than mathematically. In cl common speech, we say things like something has a lot of energy and that something could be a fast-moving car. Or we could say something like I'm running out of energy today. But other things have energy and it's rather hard to perceive it or recognize that they have energy. If we hold a bowling ball in the air, we could ask, does it have any energy? And many of us would say, well, no, it's just sitting there. But what if I hold the bowling ball over an egg? Does it have any energy now? What if I let go? Well, of course, if I do that, it squashes the egg. And we would then perceive that the bowling ball was able to do something. Once I let go of it, it smashes the egg. But it had the ability to do something whether or not there was an egg standing underneath the bowling ball. In fact, it had an ability whether or not there was an egg there or not. And how do we articulate what that ability is? That's in a form of energy as well. When we look at various interactions, we see energy coming and going. If we consider, for example, a tennis ball that's about to hit a tennis racket, it's moving along at some speed. It has a kinetic energy. If we were to graph that speed, it might look like this picture here on the left. It's moving along through the air and then starts to hit the racket. And as the racket stretches, the speed slows down. For an instant in time, the ball comes to a rest, squished up against the racket. And then the racket's reclose back again, throwing the ball off at this point K on the graph. Now the ball goes sailing through the air and has the same speed as it did on the way in. So if the ball had kinetic energy at the beginning and it has kinetic energy at the end, you could say that's all fine, but there's a mysterious moment here at the center of this graph at about 2.7 seconds at the point S where all the kinetic energy seemed to go away. It was gone. And you could ask where did it go? And furthermore, how did it manage to suddenly reappear? In other examples, a tennis player might serve the ball by tossing it up in the air, and it has kinetic energy as it leaves her hand. But as the ball goes up into the air for a split second, it's at rest. Its speed is zero before it starts falling back down to the ground. And although the ball left her hand with some kinetic energy, for that split second when it's up in the air, it has no kinetic energy. The question is, where does that kinetic energy in the ball disappear to? As the ball begins falling to the ground again, it, acquire, it reacquires some kinetic energy. And where did that kinetic energy come from? It seems as though this concept of energy, at least as we've talked about kinetic energy, has the ability to, to go away and, or disappear and then reappear. In physics, we like to look for quantities that are constant over time. And so we want to talk about the conservation of this thing called energy. Since kinetic energy seems to come and go so quickly, it's, prob it's probably the case that we need to think about a broader definition of energy that will be a quantity that an object possesses some of and has a constant amount of. Kinetic energy is a form of energy, but it can't be this broader definition of energy because it seems to be coming and going. And the question is, when it goes away, what does it go into? Does it go into another form of energy? When we say conservation of energy in physics, we mean retain so as to be constant. A, a system will have a, a a consistent or constant amount of energy over time. So we don't mean to stockpile and build up as a conservationist would, but conserve in physics means have a constant value. We're going to define another kind of energy called potential energy, 
which can be another form of energy possessed by an object which gives it the potential to do something. And we'd like to use this new concept of potential energy, which we'll denote by a letter U, such that if we add it to the kinetic energy, then this will be a constant. Once we give an object an overall amount of energy, then it can trade form between back and forth between K and U, but its sum will be a constant number. Mathematically, this is the same statement as if say, we said that if we measured the kinetic and potential energy at some initial time and then do it at a later final time, we should find that the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential summed together equals the final kinetic energy plus the final potential. If we rearrange terms now and move all the kinetic energies to one side of this equation and the potential energies to the other side of the equation, we find Kf minus Ki equals the negative of Uf minus Ui, or the change in kinetic energy is the negative of the change in potential energy, where change means final minus initial. This statement helps us think to a definition for this new thing called the potential energy, because we remember that by the work energy theorem, the change in kinetic energy equals work. So if we're still looking or shopping for a definition for this thing called the potential energy, we can say that the change in potential energy is equal to the negative of the work done on a system. Let's take an example. Suppose I toss a ball with initial speed, v naught up into the air. It will go up into the air by a distance h and momentarily stop and then it will come back down to the ground. Initially, the ball, as it leaves my hand, has a kinetic energy, one-half m v naught squared. And initially, there will not have any potential energy because of gravity will not have done any work yet on the ball. At the top of the arc here, the ball will come to a rest, and therefore the kinetic energy, kf, will equal zero. The final potential energy, which will equal the negative of work done by gravity, will be the negative of the integral of zero, from zero to h of minus mg dy, which equals mg times h. If we solve and we say that the energy of the system is constant, in other words, the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy equals the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy, then we have that one-half mv naught squared has to equal mgh. And this can be a simple way of solving problems because in this case we had only a kinetic energy to begin with and a potential energy at the end. And if we look at the, that expression we can actually solve for how high the ball will go up in the air once we know at what speed we launched it. And we find that the speed, uh, the height h will equal v naught squared over 2g, which is actually an expression we derived in a much more complicated way using one-dimensional kinematics early on in the semester. But we were able to solve it more quickly using the concept of conservation of energy. And we'll seek many solutions to problems in the future where conservation of energy will solve a, will solve a problem more quickly and with fewer steps than we would with kinematics and Newton's laws. You will need to know some potential energies to, as we move on in this course. Again, the potential energy is always just the negative of work done by a, a system. And we can talk about gravitational potential energy, which is the potential energy that something has to be set in motion just because it's suspended at a certain height above the ground and gravity will start to pull on it. The potential energy due to gravity is the mass of an object times g times the height off the ground. At least that's an expression that's valid near the surface of the Earth. The spring force also can create potential energy because the spring force can do work on a system and the negative of that work will equal the potential energy. If a spring is normally at rest and has x equals zero, it has no potential to move an object. But a spring that has either been compressed or, or stretched by a distance x has the potential to move an object as it contracts 
uh, or expands back to its, its rest length. The potential energy stored in the spring will be the negative of work done, and that will equal 1 half kx squared. These are two expressions that you should endeavor to remember. We'll practice using these, and we'll talk about other forms of potential energy as well, but here's where we'll start, and we'll try to do conservation of energy problems where kinetic energy transforms into potential energy, and vice versa.